Last thing I'm going over is on Tuesday, I plan on release, releasing a new sample app. Could be considered, in many respects, a universal app. And what do I mean by that? I mean that uh, it, with this, you can basically fill in a lot of the scenario blanks where you need to collect data. Um, most of the time, what is it? You've got these data points that you need to collect. You need some way to collect those data points and collect those data points over and over and over again. For example, let's say I have a pre-trip inspection where I need to capture various pieces of data against a vehicle before we go out. So if I come in here and I say that I'm capturing data against the 2004 Toyota Camry, and then here's the items that I need to do. I need what's the vehicle ID. I need is the tire pressure okay. Yep, cool. And we're good to go, sign, happy days. Moving on. Or what if I have an end of shift checklist that I need to do for a kitchen where we make sure that we do certain things that need to be happen, need to happen, right? So I come here and I select the kitchen that I'm doing my end of shift checklist for. Are the gas burners off? Yes. Are the lights off? Yep. Uh, is the security turned on? Sure is. We're good to go. Greetings, salutations, and all good things in between. What's up, everyone? Matt here. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. I do appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, perhaps you'll consider subscribing. I upload weekly content about how to be a ninja with the AppSheet platform. I live stream on Friday and upload videos like this on Tuesday. Enough of that. Let's get to the video. Let me, let me walk through the... Uh, the basics of what's going on here. So if I go to the tables, there is a few groupings of tables that uh, I'll go over here. So the first one I'll touch on, because it's the easiest one to understand, is inspections and inspection items. Obviously, the whole idea with this app is we're doing an inspection. I'll, it's not limited to that. I'll touch on that more later. But that's the idea, right? I've got this checklist of items that I need to collect and I need to go through. One, two, three, four, five. Cool, we did the inspection. Hey, happy days. So the inspections table is the parent of the inspection. It's the actual inspection where we're saying this person on this date is doing this inspection on this thing, right? And then the inspection items are the individual things that we're doing. That's group number one. Uh, the easiest to understand. The next group to understand is what I call entity groups. Oops, that's not the right one. Is entity groups. So what is this? Uh, as I alluded when I was talking about the inspection, the inspection includes this is the thing we are inspecting. Entity groups is the group of things that you need to inspect. Now I did this because this gives you the ability to have anything that you want inside here. What do we want to inspect? Vehicles. What do we need to collect data from? Employees. What, what uh, checklists do we need to do that we need to make sure that we're done? Maybe I have kitchens and I need to make sure that we do an end of shift checklist. So by adding in an entity group, right, it gives you the ability to add in anything that you want to collect data against. And then the entities to inspect is the individual things for the group that you want to collect data on. Uh, my group is vehicles. So I have a 2004 Camry. I've got a 1990 whatever. I've got, see what I mean? My group is employees. I have Matt, Mark, Sarah, whatever. My, you get what I'm going with this? My entity group is kitchens and I've got Kitchen number one, kitchen number two, kitchen number three. My thing is inventory locations. And I've got location one, location two, location three. So where I'm going with this, you can do anything with this that you would want. That's the second group. The, the next group is harder to understand just because of labels. Um, <laughs> really, it's just a label problem. Um, I call it catalog. Catalog and catalog items. The, the idea behind this is largely a mirror of the inspections. So uh, I could have called this catalog inspections and maybe that might have made the connection a bit more clear, but 
This isn't an inspection app. You can use this for any anything. Questionnaires, checklists, you name it, man. <laughs> like, or inspections, but inspection's the easiest thing to kind of center your mind around, like this is what's going on. The catalog is your catalog of inspections. So as the inspection table down here is the parent to the inspection items that we're collecting, the catalog is the parent to the catalog items, which are the things that we need to collect. So by combining all three of these things together, I'm able to put into, the, into this system, these are the things that we need to collect data for. These are the individual pieces of data that we need to collect. And these are the datas that we have collected on these things for the items that we need to collect. By those three combined, I am Captain Planet. No, <laughs> like by all those, you can literally, like this, this fits in a real rough way. Like it's not perfect, right? It's not, you know, it's not natively built for whatever it is that you're trying to do. But with this sort of system, you can largely create just by entering records into the data, into the database, a system to collect 90% of the data that you're probably going to need to collect. Clearly, it doesn't have any kind of flows from one thing to another. It doesn't have any kind of like validations or whatnot. Maybe, oh, I could, <laughs> future advancements. But it gives you the ability to like build, maybe even like a, you know, like just proof of concept type of thing. So let me go over it. Um, all right, and then obviously there's a user table <laughs> because you know, users, you gotta have a user table. Um, so if we just start here, right? All right, so uh, users are the users of the system, obviously. If we go to entities, so these are the groups. And just like I was talking about, I have employees, kitchens, and vehicles. If I go into, let's go to kitchens, um, right? So then I have my related entities to inspect. And I put in here my awesome restaurant kitchen because I have an awesome restaurant kitchen. Not really, but hey. Um, so this is the group, kitchens, and this is the individual thing that I need to collect data for, my awesome restaurant kitchen. So if we go back and we say the group is vehicles, I can enter in all of the things that I need to collect data for. I've got a 2004 Toyota Camry, a Mack truck number 43. Add in all of the vehicles that we need to collect data for. Put them in here. I've got a list, I've got a group of employees where then I can add in my list of employees. Maybe this is a list of clients, right? All right, so this is one side of things. These are the things that we need to collect data for, okay? Now, moving on to the other side of things, we've got the catalog. So the catalog is, these are the datas that we need to collect. So if I just look through what I've entered in here, I have one that is contact info, one that is an end of shift checklist and one that is a pre-trip inspection one for each of those categories so and you can see the categories i have over here right so if we start at the top so for my employees i have this contact info catalog right and inside there i've come down here and i've specified these are the items that i want to collect for this catalog all right i want their name and their name data type is a text. Their email is an email, their phone's a phone, their image is a photo, and the best time to contact them is an enum. What is all of this data type stuff? Well, let me show you. So if we go and we look at the inspection items itself. So inspection items is the child table to the inspection where we're actually collecting the individual data points for the things that we're supposed to be collecting. Okay. So this is like bottom of the database, bottom of the hierarchy. This is like the data that everything else is using inside here. What I've done, the, the magic that makes this a pseudo universal system is if you look here in the inspection items table, I have this, group of all of these items, of all of these fields right here. I've got a text entry field, that's a long text. I have a photo, that's an image. I have an enum, that's an enum. An enum list, that's an enum list. 
blah, 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 all the way down, right? And if I go and I show you, just let's say this enum entry, if I go to the show if formula for this, you can see it's got a formula on here to where we only show it inside the form and we only show it if the catalog item that I'm doing, if that thing's data type is an enum. Same thing for if I come down here to the phone entry, it only shows me if the catalog items data type is phone. Same thing for the, the photo entry, only if the catalog items data type is photo. Okay, so what is this catalog item data type? Okay, so if we go and we look at the catalog items, what I've done inside here is, so this is the child table to the catalog. These are the blueprint records that tell the system, these are the data points that we need. Okay, not only do we need to tell the system, these are the data points, like the name of the data point and maybe a description of the data point that we're trying to collect, but we also need to tell it what kind of data because the, the entry, the field that you will use to collect data for a text is very different from an enum, which is very different from a number, which is very different from a photo. I can't use the same field for e any of those. That's why in the inspection items form, I have one column for each of the photo, or I'm sorry, each of the data types that I've included inside the system. I haven't included all of them, I've only included the ones that I want to use, um, but it's all the primary ones. Some of the ancillary ones I left out. So inside the catalog items, this is the side of the database where I'm telling the system, this is the data point that I want, this is its type, and then I've got a whole bunch of other stuff that I've included as well. So like, let's say that I say the thing I'm collecting is a number. Well. I can put a number min and a number max on that. I can also have, is this required for them to answer? Yes or no, right? Maybe it's a data point that's not that important for us. So we could let them skip it. Um, let's keep going down here. You've got an image. So you can add like an image uh, as a, an example of what this person needs to do. I've got a space for you to type in how to steps. So if you want to include how to information to collect the data point that you're trying to get from the person, you can include a photo that'll should, you know, it could be, it could be whatever, an illustration or what, or a photo with some markup on it. Right. And then literally step one, step two, step three, step four, for each data point that you're collecting, each of the catalog items. Keep going here, there's more. <laughs> uh, this, is, this gets really crazy here. Now we get into, is it required after this item? I've included a way for you to say, uh, this item that I want is a follow-up to something else. As in, did you turn off the lights? Yes or no? If somebody says no, why? Why didn't you turn off the lights? And I want, and it's required for you to type in some text and give me a reason. This system allows you to create any kind of follow-up chain that you would want. Not only, not only do you spec can you specify this item follows something else, but you can also specify it's required based on a value that somebody selected in the previous answer. I'm getting crazy, man. Getting crazy. <laughs> um, I also included, so what if you're collecting a piece of data, but there is no piece of data, right? Like what if in the questionnaire that I'm creating for people to collect, you know, to answer, collect these answers, maybe I want to include the ability for them to say not applicable, right? I've included this alterior, this alt answer space down here to where you can specify yes or no, should I allow them to use an alternative answer? And if it is, what is it that it is? And then the very last section of this is for each of these data points that you include inside your system, I have an analytics section that collects some real basic, broad, high level stuff. What was the minimum time that it took for somebody to collect the data point, the max, the average, 
What is the total number of times that the thing has been skipped? So on and so forth. Just some high level analysis uh, that, that will just every day do a statistical analysis over all of the answers that people have done and give you a nice little high level overview of everything that's going on. Crazy, right? All right, so let's demo what this looks like. So if I come inside here um, and you can see, I already have a current inspection that I've got going on. If I come in here and I say, so this is the pre-trip inspection for my 2004 Toyota Camry. And you can see I have three items remaining. And so displayed right here on top are my items that are remaining. Okay, this is almost the same exact thing, the same mechanisms, right, that I used for all of these other sample apps that I've been putting out, like shopping cart stuff and all of these things, they all kind of use the same sort of stuff. Um, I'm, I've got the current inspection held inside of a slice that's holding it as a global variable, just like the shopping cart. So the shopping cart, when I say that I'm starting in order, right, that order that I'm building is held inside of a slice as a global variable. And that then informs the entirety of the system that, hey, this person's doing something. And then whatever, you, whatever you're doing, that's the, the item that's connected to whatever you're, I'm sorry, whenever you tap on an item, whatever parent you're looking at, that's connected to the child record that's made. Now this system varies, it, it is different from the shopping cart because the shopping cart is built in such a way that it only allows one order to be built at a time. You can't do two things at once. You can only do one. This inspection app I've built in such a way to where you can have any number of inspections that you want running it at, at once. And the system is configured so that it still works that when I come into here, when I come into my uh, current inspection that I'm doing and I select one of these items, it is connected to the right parent. Now, all of this is going to be available to view and for you to make a copy of this and to play with it. And I'll have not only this little snippet of this video, but I'll also do some further deep dives on how certain things are put together so that you can really see how this app works and what's, what, what, what you can do, <laughs> what you can do with it. Um, but yeah, this is the, the next sample app that I have that I'm putting out here. It's uh, obviously this is gonna be uh, a big thing. My, my hope here, right, is that this is, this, this is a start for another evolution series. Um, so the shopping cart is an evolution series. I've got the report builder, that's another one that I'm doing. I wanna start this as another one of these evolution things, right? So this is, the base version of the app. I didn't create a how-to video for this because it's crazy. And I included a lot of things that are like, a lot of really high level things that I will eventually go over, uh, such as you may have noticed that if I'm on my current inspection and I select one of the items that I'm doing, I'm taken to the form and there's these navigation buttons down here. So I've, never talked about what these navigation button things are, how they work, how to make them work, how to get it smooth inside your system. This is one of the first times that I'm including them inside of an app like this where I'll show how to do it. And that's all I got for this video. Thanks for watching, sticking around to the end like this. This is just a real brief overview of uh, like the high level things of how this works. I obviously didn't go any into any of the nuts and bolts about how any of the specific actions are working or how the remaining stuff is working. Like I didn't do any of that. I will do those in future videos. If you have questions about how any of the specifics work, you want me to do a deep dive on something, let me know in the comments below and I'll get it done. Thanks for watching everybody. I do appreciate it. I hope you enjoy this app and we'll see where it goes. All right, everyone. See you in the community.